No, Let's see how it looks. Ooh, you're full screen now. How do I look? Much better. better? I mean, yeah. if that if that's possible. I was just going to say if that's possible. You read my mind. I could adjust it if you need me to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can get a yeah. little. I mean, I hate to cut off the torso because that's, you know, one of your strong suits. Not any. It's <laughs> <laughs> just rough I mean, out yeah. here, man. <laughs> Dude, hold on. Let's talk about that for a second. Look at that seconds. hair, though. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> looks great, bro. Looks great. All my podcasts, I'm wearing hats now. People are like, no, oh, what's, yeah. what's the deal with hats? What's up with him? How am I doing this? I feel like every time I'm like trying to like set the camera up right and shit, I always feel like like my dad's doing it right. Like, oh, let me uh. Oh, Sonny, is this, this the right way? Yeah, yeah my is this working? Is it on? So, yeah, all right, we'll 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 okay. do it official real quick. You know, I'll throw in sure. the theme music a little later, but so, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Chris Levine. What's up, my brother? It's just funny. It's, it's just funny. You know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. What's up, everybody? And Tony, thank you for having me on again, brother. Dude, thank you, man. Dude. And thank you so much for uh, for dealing with that uh, crazy time change. It's 8.30 my time, and it's like 4 o'clock your time. So It's, it's still like 9 a.m. actually here in California. So. <laughs> <laughs> that worked, right? uh, are, are we coming from the, um, the Levine Studios? What, what do you got going on over there, bud? No, this, <laughs> this is the, the Levine apartment in downtown. <laughs> um. No, I got the black screen up because like we were saying earlier, I feel like once this is over, nobody wants to see anybody, I think, especially in, in Hollyweird, right? So I feel like self-tapes are going to be like everything. Like, oh, just put it on tape. We'll see you if we have to, you know? So for sure. I got yeah, like a light it, on me. Yeah, because when you're going in for aud auditions, aren't, uh, aren't you like going into like a building that I assume they either sublease or, or rent out for the day or the week or whatever? So it'll probably save them money. I would imagine, no? That, that's true, too. I mean, usually that's built into their the cast and director's cost, right, is like mm. an office space or a recording session. And and there's there's lots of cheap ways to, to do that here. It's, I don't think it's really about the saving money. I think it's just people are going to be, like, grossed out by everybody for a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> are, are, you know? are, you, are you starting to see it? You know, for people that know, obviously, you're, you're an actor. And uh, are you mm. still in L.A., downtown L.A.? Still in downtown. Nice. So like are, are right where the zombie apocalypse would happen, bro. It would happen <laughs> like right outside my shit right now. Yeah. And, <laughs> and where a lot of, um, scenes, I think of, uh, um, what's that one movie were filmed? Um, mm, Beverly Hills like Chihuahua. That. Yeah. Famous for being in downtown LA. The only movie I think that is famous for it. <laughs> Actually come to think of it. How many downtown LA movies are there? I feel like we do a lot of TV shows, but I don't know if we do a lot of movies, do we? Yeah. Compton? That, that Ice Cube movie? Wasn't it? Yeah, and I, I've heard of it. <laughs> That's the only one, I think. <laughs> Tony, what's yeah, up with this green chair you got? You got like a gamer chair or what is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, normally I don't have this one up because I don't like to support, uh, you know, the, the company I work for. Uh, on the podcast, but the wife is right. using, you know, cause we're both in quarantine. So she's using my podcast chair, but yeah, this is my, uh, look at that thing. It's my fucking gamer chair, bro. It's, you know, I've been retarded. saying to myself, I would play way more games if I had a chair like that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the games came first with the chicken <laughs> or the egg, but right. like this is a, uh, I mean, it's got the, the headrest, but then yep. it's got one for the lower back too. So if you want a little compression, you just you know, pop that little cunt right there, and it's cozy, dude. Dropping the C yeah. bomb, no, no worries around here. Yeah, no, it's it's explicit uh, under quarantine. I like it. I fucking like it, man. No, normally PG, but you know, I actually I have a uh, a black screen. I hate to discriminate, um, but also <laughs> <laughs> I have <laughs> I have a white screen Racist. too, but can't right. lead with that. <laughs> it's not as um, big as what you're saying. <laughs> well played, sir. Uh, but I also have a green screen too, and I've never mm. used it. Like I, I have it underneath my couch here and yeah. I got it, you know, uh, I think literally 
I might have gotten it a couple of weeks before I had you come on. It was only maybe 18 months ago on that. I was try, like trying to start my own like YouTube channel, yep. but it was uh, it was actually going to be kind of like the Good News Network that John Krasinski. What's face? Yeah. yeah, which is fantastic. But I, I called it Getting Socialized. That was like my thing. I and remember I was, that. Yeah. And I was going to interview people and talk about all the good shit that's going on and all that. And uh, that's when I got my green screen first. And you were actually the first guest on on Getting Socialized. I don't know if you know. I was. You popped the Getting Socialized cherry. I was so excited. And then yeah, and as I, never, I... I never did one after that, by the way. <laughs> it was so bad. It was like, oh, never. I'm just not cut out for this. It Chris had was so terrible. <laughs> negative 10 views. Somehow people... <laughs> YouTube <laughs> sent you a bill. <laughs> like hey we're not we're not showing this shit for free that's crazy <laughs> but yeah, yeah i don't know you know but it is kind of it was kind of uh i guess a blessing in disguise i don't know but when when i first did that episode and uh it was a long chat too we chatted for like an hour and a half and i was like dude this is rad i'm i'm digging it but for some reason i was like the the platform it makes sense now because of quarantine but you know then when i could sit down with someone face to face and talk to them I was like, why don't I just do a podcast? You know, last like two years, it's been <clears throat> blown up like crazy. So I was like, why don't I just do a podcast instead? And that's when I started like two weeks later, I did my own podcast and I stopped doing the video thing for a second. And I just, uh, I used this headset, hooked it up to my phone, did voice memo and started recording just, you know, bullshit, me talking to myself, saying yep. stuff that's on my mind. And then, uh, okay. you know, I just, I started a podcast that way and now full circle now I'm doing stuff on YouTube. So, I mean, really what I'm trying to say is it's all because of you. So thank you. Well, oh, oh shit. No pressure. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to knock this one out of the park and just restart your career again for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know where not, you're going, but. I'm not recording this, by the way. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's get it recording. This is <laughs> good stuff happening. I'm just kidding, of course. I've been recording for two hours. Yeah, like um, while I was setting it up. Now, now look at you got this dope microphone. Like it sounds good. Like I don't know if it sounds bassy and like no echo. It sounds good. Thank you, man. You know, it's, it's straight yeah. up, uh, straight up mic. So I have two mics. Actually, I have four, but I have two mics set up in the studio. I got a little webcam. I'll kind of show you. Give you a little quick tour. Sure. And let's then see it. This is the new condo, by the way. I know. How many condos so, do you have now, bro? Uh, just one condo, one house. Oh. And the house is in Orlando, and then we're we're getting get ready to go our third, but with this whole quarantine stuff, it, it's been tough. So we're probably gonna hold off on that blessing in disguise. Give us more time to save good, money. Good for you, man. You know, when you, when you work hard, right. And you're a good guy and you're an honest person, good shit happens. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And when I do find Maybe. that special person in my life, I can't wait to marry him. So <laughs> you beat me to it, bro. I know, I know you're trying to set yourself up. Don't be fucking there, cute. Like, what, what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be cute and coy with me. I, I read your tricks. Damn. Um, so this is the new setup right here, bro. Check this out. Yeah. You make beats? Um, occasionally. And <laughs> little then, jingles? So you can like, you can pre-record ads in here. And like, I don't know if you can hear this, but. <laughs> Did you hear that? I have that laugh track on my phone all day long as I just talk to people. That's awesome. <laughs> So <laughs> like I'll say something and they don't laugh. So I just go boop and it just, I get it anyways. Boop. <laughs> They're already on the phone. Yeah, it's genius. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, man. So it's, uh, we, I've definitely, uh, I've, I've spent some money and upgrade a little bit, but it's, you know, it's been good, man. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's money well spent, man. That's cool. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Now I got to try to set this thing up now. It keeps fucking oh, that's my fault. On, man. You see me, I just got this, like I said, but like, can they, can they roll it when they send it? Do they have to fold it 35 times so I look like, you know, getting wrinkles oh, out of this thing is like a nightmare. It's the worst. I don't know. Do, what you, have, do. I, do you have one of those? Uh, steamers? Yeah. No, I don't. I'm going to get one now. I have to, you know, because I'm not going to take it down and then iron the that. whole thing. When is the last time you even ironed your shirt? You know what I mean? I know. You iron? In fact, this, this is the most I've dressed up in six weeks. You're like fully nude below that. Yeah, I'm I'm Krasinski yeah. in it right now for sure. It's it's hot out here. <laughs> Where are you at right now? You're in Tampa. I am. Yep, just at home. Congrats, man! Fucking Brady! Part. Holy shit! Oh, Brady and Gronky. It's gonna change the whole league. Mm-hmm. 
at least for a year. But I don't know. Do you think he can come in to a team that's okay and just make it a Super Bowl team in one year? No. I don't think so either. I think he's going for the check and the warm weather. Mm-hmm. And then after yeah. this year, he's going to just. Yeah. Peace. That's what I would do. A little extra why? money. Yeah, a little parting yeah, gift. Yeah, why, why would you, you know, retire in Boston? Boston. Or, you know, New England. Or yeah. uh, I don't know why they have different accents, but yeah, just come down to Florida, hang out. He's got a nice place literally across the bay from us. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, he doesn't answer any of my phone calls, but. Uh, Probably just change his number to the Tampa number. It's not, you know, it's yeah. not you. It's a different number now. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, just retire here. He's going <clears> to <throat> hang out and collect some dough and him and Rob Gronkowski. I mean, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a winning team. Yeah. I mean, they'll team. definitely play off bound. No problem. You know, you yeah. got Brady firing back there. What's looks radical good too. is, oh, it looks great. No homo. Yeah. But what's homo. great is, <laughs> very homo. But could you imagine, because the Super Bowl is in Tampa this year. Mm. Could you imagine <clears throat> if they went? Game changer. Amazing. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. What do you guys oh, got and, going uh, on over there? Yeah. LA I don't now. really follow the Rams. No, you shouldn't. No. Yeah, because I mean, you, um, you lost the Raiders. Lost the Raiders Cali. to Vegas. Yeah. yeah, and then you got what? Um, I mean, San Francisco's like a six-hour drive from me, so I don't really. Yeah, they'll probably end up going them. to New Mexico or something here in the next couple of years. Probably. New and Mexico, then the Rams. I mean, <clears throat> you know, they had one year that first year, yeah. and then <laughs> I don't know what's going on now. It was a rough year for them last year. Um, but yeah, I just you know, I try to do my best to follow my Dolphins. Uh, we just picked up a new QB. Tua. What's his name? Tua? Tua, man. My Hawaiian Tua. Yeah. Aloha dreamboat. It was like I saw yeah. he got drafted, and then the mm-hmm. next day he's like, I've partnered with Hulu. I'm like, already making that money. Already, good dude. Good for that guy. He's cranking. Yeah, it's yeah. a good spot. Yeah, we picked up a couple good drafts, actually, so I'm, I'm stoked. Hopefully you can, uh, you can make it down, man, get some games. Like We try to go to a couple games a year. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, we're not too, we're not too, too far. We're only four hours, but I'm down there for work all the time, and I got a good relationship yep. with the guy at the Dolphins. So, uh, we try to make it to a couple games, make a whole weekend out of it. They hook you up or no? Yeah. Nice. yeah. I mean, they're not the best seats in the house, but you know, yeah. it's the Dolphins. So even the best seats in the house are like fifty bucks. Sideline, yeah. Oh, they are cheap. I was looking for the Rams tickets even <laughs> last year. They were like. 300 for shitty tickets and i'm like oh man that's a lot of money to spend on a shitty ticket <laughs> so i don't know that's and then if you want to go get see disappointed Le- to get disappointed exactly and then i was like all right you know i gotta see lebron at staples center right before it's sure. over you know maybe the second greatest basketball player of all time first greatest who knows right it's another argument but the la- the highest seats in the place are still in hundreds of dollars i was like yeah. damn that's not sued yeah yeah, but I mean, he does put on a fucking hell of a game, dude. Yeah, just what an amazing guy, dude. Yeah, you were just watching me like, yeah, I kind of get it. I kind of get why I'm spending, you know, three hundred dollars a ticket. I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, he's phenomenal. You know, it's like it, it's it's like uh, we're actually we were gonna go out. Um, I was gonna go out west for our meeting, uh, because you know we go out out west for my sales meeting every year, and uh, like that one year we saw you, we we, we go Vegas and then we usually hang out in Cali. And like last year, we did Napa Valley, which was which was awesome. And we're gonna. I know, and I missed that. I missed that with you guys. I know we were so upset with you, but it's okay. We just had a good time. I'm sure you did. Would have more fun if if you can. Yeah, it was it was great. Yeah. uh, And then it just got canceled. We we just got a phone call um, last week saying that uh, we're not doing it this year. It'll be. You think we'll ever? Which is great. Yeah, you'll. Yeah, you'll be sitting right there in that chair. Yeah. Pantless. Good thing, I got a good, good thing I got a good gamer chair. <laughs> using the fuck out of this thing. Were you offended by my gamer chair? <laughs> Calling me out? Yeah, it's a gamer chair, Chris. <laughs> it's my podcast chair, Chris. <laughs> um, <But> yeah, I'm <laughs> chairless. I'm squatting this whole time. In case you want to know. <laughs> I was it's wondering where the back to that is. It's a full on squat. <laughs> And why you're panting so heavily. <laughs> it's getting hot up in here, man. Um, how many of you can do like the wall squat and drink? Uh, I could probably do it two reps. Tough. Speaking of that, you and these handstands, bro. Good for you. Ooh, thank, I thank couldn't you. do it. 
I couldn't do it. You man. tried? The handstand where you put on your shirt thingy. Yeah, but you yeah, didn't, you didn't do, do it. it. You didn't. I did it. Yeah. You yeah, could do it. You, you just didn't video. I tried, it. dude. It's on my Instagram. That's the last thing I posted on Instagram because I was just such a fail for me. I couldn't do it. And then you deleted your account immediately. Changed username and everything. Can't find me no more. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it was a terrible sense. time for me, bro. Because, you know, I feel like what it is, I'm too massy. If that's a word. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> too <Yeah>. massy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you do a little, little definition, massy. Chris thinks massy. he's big, right? That's the... I- <laughs> adjective. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Would that be an adjective? But like, I just spell it. Yeah, like, it's an yeah. What? Massy, yeah. Verb, right? It's an, Maybe it's a verb. Oh, shit. I'm so bad at that. Are you too? You're horrible, yeah. So noun is a person, place, or thing. If I'm right. massy, does that make me a thing? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think verb is, a, verb is the action. <clears throat> And then adjective is description. Description so it's an, of it's the an action. Adjective, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. We figured it out. Someone's gonna come and say, "Hey, by the way, mm. yeah, you guys it's, are only dumb. A, it's only a verb if it's uh, pronounced in the uh, pronoun of the adjective of the." <laughs> you know what happens at every YouTube video now is like the uh, the like the little thing where it's like um like oh we need all the adjectives director yes you know. <laughs> <laughs> You always have to have that. Yes. Yes. That'll be honest. <laughs> but uh, too messy. I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and I couldn't get, true. I couldn't lock. Did you, do you lock your arms? Did yeah. that help? That was like my third take, mm. which was even more. Everyone asked me, they go, well, how many takes? And I was like three, but it, it's not like, uh, you know, doing jumping jacks and having multiple takes of that. You know, you're doing no. handstands, so the third take is harder than the first take. It's not easier. No. So it gets it gets worse. Like, you need a nail on the first try. If not, you know, you're screwed. So, yeah, hurt. try to do it. And then I realized the closer your hands are, mm-hmm. the more of a challenge it is because, A, you can't balance. But then, B, it's less triceps, you know, just like a push-up. Like, if you spread it out, it's a lot harder. Oh, right. So, you just got to find that sweet spot. That that made sense. But it was tough, man. Yeah, that's tough, man. Right? Like, the first time I did it, like, the first time I tried – I like spent a lot of time on it. It was like a full on two minute handstand, me just going, I'm going to give it my all. And then realizing it's just not going to happen. So then I decided to make the funny video where I, I do it with five different shirts and thinking it was the shirt was the problem every time. But that was a hell of a workout because I still had to get in a handstand to try to do it with different shirts, you know, Multiple five times. different times. Yeah, yeah. So I get it. Well, Because I, I saw Tom Holland do it, you know, Spider-Man. And I was like, I could do this shit if Spider-Man can do it. Nope. Tom Holland can it's, do it, and I can't. No one's ever said that in the history of <laughs> if Spider-Man could do it. <laughs> it just makes sense that me, a human being, yeah. can do it. Why could I uh, not do it? He is a stud, though, man. For I mean, he's a kid. Yeah. He just, just looks saw- nice. I've never met him, but, you know, it seems like everybody around him enjoys his company. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like a good, good guy. Good for him. Yeah. Um, I'm a douche. Is- no one is ever around me. Yes. <laughs> we, we could tell. You have no background <laughs> yeah. or nothing. Where is everybody? <laughs> I even I even wanted to do my green screen here, but I have so much so much shit behind me, and I yeah. got nothing to post it because like um, it's a loft, so I gotta. I mean, it's, it would be a process, but the green screen would be cool because like this is a Zoom meeting, so there's like a setting where you could say I have a green screen, and mm-hmm. you click it, mm-hmm. and that way you can upload like, you know, whether it's a a blank screen or you know a picture. Or, you know, you can go back and forth and shit. So, oh yeah, that's I cool. I yeah, think they do that cool. now without um, the green screen. Yeah, I've tried it. But, Is it not you know, that good? Like, it's not. Well, especially with yeah. my chair. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, uh, yeah. It'd, it'd be all the spotty. Some would be damn gamer chair. Someone fucking gamer. Are you? Chair. Do you play games at all? Or no, you don't play video games. Oh yeah. Well, now I do in particular. It oh, depends yeah. on if it depends on if the wife is sleeping. Because if she's sleeping, I'll play more games. And if she's awake, I have to spend time with her. Yeah. So what are you, what are you playing right now? Uh, I'm hooked on Warzone, bro. Call of Duty. Yeah. Is that, that's not the new, the newest one is Modern Warfare, right? Is it, Warzone is another one that came out around this? Well, I, I mean, Modern mm-hmm. Warfare, I guess, is the, the game. But then Warzone right. is like the attachment so you got modern warfare warzone oh. which is like battle royal but right it's also got like a uh, multiplayer mode and it's like different different modes 
So yeah. you could just buy Warzone by itself? It's actually free. Oh. Yeah, the uh, the Battle Royale version is free. You just go to, oh. what do you got, Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. <sighs> One of those. Um, but I think we can cross-pollinate, can't we? Oh, yeah? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm an Xbox fan, like, but I got this PS4 for free. So I was like, I guess I'll play it. I do like the virtual reality. I've been doing a little bit of that before I throw up every time. It's, it's on the edge every time. <laughs> Seriously? Have you ever tried it? Have you tried it? Never. Never. Oh, man. It's phenomenal. But, like, some games, oh, it just makes you so nauseous. First, it starts with these sweats, right? You're playing, and you're like, maybe it's because I'm into it. I'm starting to sweat, like, you know, like a physical activity. Then, no, now, then things start getting a little loopy. You know what I'm saying? And then you take the headset off, and it fucks up your equilibrium for, like, the rest of the day. Really? It's that rough. So, it's like you have to, like, if you start sweating in VR – Shut it down, brother. You're done. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Why do you think that sucks. is? I don't know. I think it's your your brain doesn't know what's going on, right? Like right. you're moving, your brain sees you moving within a thing, but your legs aren't moving. So it's kind of like it's being on a. It's like being out in sea, for the first Same time. Shit. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. Um, but they yeah, got. The only, um, I mean, the closest thing I've done to it's not even VR, but it's just like all those. It's kind of like, uh, you remember laser tag? Yeah. It's like that, but like it's that. interactive. But, it but you're not wearing a, and, a thing? But you're not wearing any equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So totally with the different. headgear is probably what fucks you up. Yeah. Something to do with that. It. And that's just the PlayStation version. Um, but they, we just did, you, it's like, a, they're, in, they're in malls now, right? This thing I just went to before the quarantine. You get an Oculus headset that's connected to like wires above you. And you have these little green balls like they do with like for real, like VR, like for uh, movie making, you know, like when uh, what's his face is the ape, you know, that so you're covered in those balls. Oh, sick. And then virtual reality turns on. And this one, they have different versions, but we played um, a zombie shooting game. And, you know, you're in a room and it gives you guidelines within the game. So you can't just like run away. But it was like full on shooting zombies for 30 minutes and it was like the most phenomenal thing no nausea or anything because you can still because you can walk around if you can move right. a little i think you're okay but man i feel like that's it's the future of every almost future of movies maybe you know yeah. instead of know, watching a right. movie you're in the movie you're in it All right yeah well there was even one i um i think it's the new star wars one out where you are mm -hmm. um and disney where it's you like walk through and you're wearing a vest or something. Have you heard about okay. this? No. And you know the um, I'm not a big Star Wars guy, but yeah, the Star Troopers, Stormtroopers, Stormtroopers. <laughs> I don't know. I was going. Yeah. You know the white helmet guys. Yeah, those and, guys. Uh, those guys. And you're walking through, and you're doing this like this interactive thing, but you're wearing these like outfits, and mm -hmm. when they shoot you with the laser, it vibrates. Feel it? Oh, that's cool. Radical. So, I mean, I'm yeah. thinking to myself, it's like, and that plus like Avatar. I don't know if you ever wrote Avatar. I actually never did. Disney. Okay, let's put it this way. So, I did, we did Avatar because, you know, we obviously go to the one here in Orlando or in Florida. Yeah. So, we, we did that probably a year ago when it came out. And then we'll do like King Kong and Fast and Furious. We did that afterwards and we're like, no. No. Un unfortunately, they've hit the bar. Like, I would go to Disney just to go to the Avatar ride and then leave that's cool. that good yeah because that's what's, the what's avatar cool land is, right yeah well there's the land but there's like mm -hmm. a bunch of different rides they have one where um you're a big avatar guy you know avatar i mean i've seen the movie a few times <laughs> oh you don't dress up or anything <laughs> i mean um, you know i feel like we're all connected in some way there you go okay <laughs> <laughs> so like you can the big tree that's you know all connected Right. right. Yeah. So, that, yeah, they have that, but they also have a ride where, you know, you're in the water like in a canoe. So that's mm -hmm. interactive, which is pretty radical. But then the actual mm. physical ride is when you're on the, the bird. Oh, yeah. And you hop on this bicycle thing. Mm. And when you're riding, it's a big screen, almost like the Back to the Future one way back in the day, if you remember that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But when it dips, you can feel it breathing. And when you're it on it, it fe you feel it in your legs. Like that's it's cool. Lungs expanding. Yeah. And then when you pass over the water, water splashes in your face and you know, you don't know it's the water. You just feel it like the mist. And then when you go, there's this one part where you like dip and fall and then you go almost into the dirt and you could smell the dirt. 
like it Crazy. smells like dirt nuts yeah so it's like when you do that i mean what are we doing here what are the ride yeah you what go to I, king what, kong which is nostalgic for us right but i mean if right now it's probably like his arm is like so motorized <laughs> <laughs> and then you know they still got et at universal it's like what are we doing here guys why do we even have that just you know so old i mean it's for the kids i get it but you know you take a kid to avatar that's like giving a kid you know an ipad yeah. first and then telling them to go yeah. outside no. yeah no he's not gonna want to go outside no. after that ipad no he's got the ipad anyway yeah. how, how is uh how is cali though the first couple of weeks of quarantine it was nice because there was no traffic. People mm-hmm. were scared in general. Now, now that certain states are getting ballsy and like different counties are like, no, we do our own thing. Now that we're back to having some traffic now, like people are out and about, you know, and it's like you go down the conspiracy way and go, oh, we're fine. Right. But then I'd rather just be safe and sorry and just listen, I'm doing my part because people are dying. If people stop dying, then I'll go out. You know, exactly. like that's how I look at it. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, And I think a lot of it has to do, everyone keeps comparing it to the flu and yeah, people die from the flu, but we have a vaccine for it. Yeah. yeah. So the reason, I mean, there, you could argue both ways, but I mean, there's a big reason why people are still dying from the flu. It's because people yeah. refuse not to, you know, get vaccinated. And then if they're carrying the flu and then, you know, they're contagious, obviously, and then you get yep. it and yep. you didn't have your vaccine and you're not immune to it and your body can't handle it. Yeah. You're going to die from it. But if everyone got, yeah. you know, the vaccine that, you know, that could help. So. Do you get the flu vaccine? Of course, every year. You do, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've never it's free. It. Oh, you never gotten it? I never wow. gotten it. Good for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're going to die. Good for you. You're Keep the asshole you're... I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was like, oh, interesting. He's talking shit about me. <laughs> um, no, but like, <laughs> oh, at that for me, point, like, um, for, <laughs> for me, the flu vaccine is um, like, I get it, right? Like, sure. And if I, but if I don't get the vaccine, you, if you have the flu, it puts you out, I think, so badly from what I've heard. It's tough to just, you know, get thousands of people sick because of you, right? Is that like a thing for the flu? It's like it gives you fevers and you're home and you're like done. The, the actual flu, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but you've never gotten the flu. Is that what you're saying? I've never gotten the flu and I've never had the flu shot. And so I don't know. I guess part of me thinks it was like, there's something in conspiracy. Some <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sure. Like, I don't like going down that route, like, especially with this, this coronavirus. But yeah. I just never thought the flu vaccine was something I, I wanted to get. Um, I get why older people should get it and, and people named Tony. But <laughs> me, I'm just <laughs> not for me. Yeah. And you know, I think the only reason I get it is because I always have gotten it. You know, it's like, I mean, you know, right? We used to take a lot of supplements. I mean, I don't even take supplements really that much anymore. Right. Because, you know, there's a lot of studies like as I get older, I learn a lot more. But, you know, the vaccine in particular is one thing that I know your body could probably handle it, like not right. having it. Right. You know, but the, the issue is when there's like, you know, 50, 60 year old folks that, you know, their body can't handle it. And someone that doesn't have a good immune system like you do doesn't get a, you know, a vaccine. Yeah. That's where it becomes an issue where it could spread and and get worse. And, you know, the flu really isn't life threatening as bad as this thing is. Right. Um, Statistically, if more people die, it's just because, you know, if you, if you do the math and look at it, it's either really, really young children or it's really Mm -hmm. older people. So it's not like 20 to 40 year olds that are dying of the flu. Yeah. Um, Cause we have treatments that could eradicate that, you know, you got Theraflu, you know, you could throw throw back some Tylenol and throw back some NyQuil and, and lower your fever pretty right quick so that that's why i don't think the vaccine is really necessary but the problem is the same people that aren't getting that vaccine if there's a coronavirus vaccine are they going to get that are you getting the corona vaccine if they make one um i'm going to treat this virus like i treat the iphone meaning you put a case on it and you keep it in your pocket (laughs) exactly (laughs) and also i'm going to wait for like one model to come out to work out the kinks so like that's where he was going with that yeah, do, do you hear that, folks? Yeah. <laughs> um, My whole team is watching me right now. That's where he's uh, going with it, guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how I feel. Is I'll wait, you know, because I have the iPhone 11, yeah, but I don't wow. have the newest model. What is it then? I don't know, 12. <laughs> so that's a, I'll probably wait like a year 
to get my coronavirus vaccine. I'll wait till like, you know, a couple thousand people die from it. Yeah. And work out the kinks. They're going to start doing some, uh, some testing. Yeah. It sounds like they're working towards really it. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. It's pretty fast. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm suspect about the whole thing. I mean, studies came out tomorrow and said, Hey, this isn't that big of a deal. The government and, you know, uh, the administration and the CDC, no one's going to say, all right, well, I guess we were wrong. They're sticking to their guns no matter what. So it's too late. It's too, it's too late. You've already shut yeah. down the whole world. Um, the only comfort I have is, is everyone's <clears throat> doing it. Like, it's not just the U S exactly. And I was like, damn, our enemies are doing this shit too. I was like, all right, I'll listen. You know, you know, it's funny. We talk about the theme parks and the one deciding factor. This is how American I am. The one deciding factor where I was like, this is a big deal. Cause I did a podcast like two months ago, talking to my buddy about this and we're like, eh, this is going to blow over. This is bullshit, whatever. And then on the podcast, I'm like, okay, you know, the second Disney shuts down, that's when I'll take this shit seriously. And that was like, you know, February or something like that. Right. And then like second week of March, <laughs> it just goes Disney shut down worldwide for a yeah. month. And I'm like, oh boy. Yeah. Real deal. You know, it's a real deal, man. When they're, uh, when they're, they're closing their doors and I get it. I'm a little upset about Florida <clears throat> opening up kind of the, uh, the border so to speak again but um yeah only because you know a lot of people travel worldwide over here so as long as they keep the bands pretty strict you know because you don't want people that are infected in new york coming down to to florida and spreading right that's, that's now georgia issue. opened up on friday right i think to a certain extent yeah okay i haven't seen yeah. any reports of like the chaos or the not chaos or if anybody is like restaurants are packed or bowling alleys are sold out or whatever they're doing bowling alleys what is this pandemic in the 90s what are you doing here i actually it's funny you say that i care about bowling because this year i was like there was two things i wanted to learn this year i didn't really have a resolution but like i had a revelation right because <laughs> i'm getting older right and so i was yes. like i want to learn how to box i i feel like as a grown-ass man i should know how to at least throw a punch 35 years i have no idea how to throw a punch i've been in two fights one fourth grade and it was eyes closed, just swung at this guy. I don't know if it landed or not. I think I cried after as well because like the anger, you know, it was like over emotion. I just, I cried. Not proud of it, but you know, fourth grade Chris was just a, a young Chris, you know, he's not as, yeah. not as tough as I am now. Um, <laughs> and then probably in college, I'm sure I was at a house party and like the wrong people were there and something started and I just threw this like Superman over everybody, didn't connect. But I'm just saying that's my extent of punching. <laughs> as <laughs> as advanced as that training is, you sure you want to exceed that well, that level of experience? I, I you know I that's how I approached the, the trainer. I said, "Listen, bro, just so you know, know my shit. I know my shit. I throw two wild punches in my life. I'll know a thing or two. I just want you to be careful." And then I realized I knew nothing about boxing or punching or fighting or and I'm and it, it literally I, I trained with them only a few times before the quarantine started, but. It just changed my life being uh, having that confidence and understanding how to like use your body to throw a punch. And the second thing I learned was how to bowl this year. Oh, that is quite yeah. a revelation. Yeah. How, how well do you bowl? You bowl a hundred and you're like, Oh, I got a hundred. <laughs> What's the max? 300? 300. I say do a uh, sal deuce. I'll do a good deuce. Do 200. You throw 200? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know last time it does. <laughs> You yeah, have like seven strikes to have a fucking game. Oh, seven out of ten. Yeah, I guess so. Seven out of ten. Yeah, it's probably a hundred. That's closer to hundred, I'm sure. It is a tough sport. You're right. You're not you're not wrong about that. But you know, I did read an article the other day where uh the first business to go is bowling alleys. So that mm. might have been a lost art for you. But good to know. But boxing, I think, is 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 a smart move. I used to do boxing uh, prior to this. Uh I was going at least twice a week to um, oh, wow. uh, title boxing, which there's a, uh, there's a cool app that I use. It's called class pass. So aside from LA okay. fitness, cause I still have that membership from like when we were 18, um, <laughs> pay like 20 bucks a month. That's uh, how we go back, bro. LA fitness it. and Waterford, uh, Waterford lakes, right? Waterford lakes. Oh, town. So aside from that, I have class pass, which is like you pay 66 bucks a month. Okay. <clears throat> and you get these credits you okay? where you can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's coronavirus. 
and you get these, uh, you get like 60 or 70 points. You can do different classes from yoga to sauna to boxing, kickboxing, and there are classes from all over the country you can go to. So like just in oh. my area, in my zip code, you type in your zip code and it's like, okay, there's, you know, 15 classes uh, that are going on today. And then, you know, like boxing's like five credits, a sauna is like 10 credits, whatever. And you just use those credits and you pay every month. So it kind of opens up your eyes. And so I do a lot of yoga oh, that way. Uh, the wife has done like Pilates and uh, bar training. I don't know if you've, bar you've seen that. Yeah, it's like the bar? ballet bar, not the drinking, oh. the good stuff. It was like a yeah. ballet bar. And then you do oh. just a lot of stretches and advanced ballet training and stuff. Right. Um, I was going to go the sure first time. Sure, you're not but... angry at that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, flexibility, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Flexibility. That was a flexibility. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you're like, um, I'm married. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's been like six months. Um, yeah. So We're fine. Everyone's fine. We're fine. fine. I'm fine. fine. She's fine. We're fine. But yeah, I do. Uh, I do boxing. I, I've done that for about six months now. And I'm. I'm loving it, dude. It's a great workout. Isn't it great? Great but, workout. Uh, yeah, it's it's sick though. Just the the techniques, you know, especially yeah. like the slits that you have to do. Yep. And I mean, yep. it's like it's very coordinated. Like you cannot go in there hungover because you will not know no. what to do. Yeah, you got to really get focused at it. So, and it's a badass workout too. The first time I did it, he had me doing. Um, three rounds of three minutes, just jump roping. I don't usually jump rope. And he's like, this is what you'll be doing in a real fight. So I want you to start with this. I, I didn't know my feet muscles could get sore. Yeah. It was crazy. It was, it was horrible. It's how out of shape I was. <laughs> now I'm out of shape again. Damn. Oh my God, dude. This, yeah, this Are you working out? I know you're working out. out. You're ridiculous, bro. You like yeah. gluten-free, vegan, fucking, you know what I mean? Like cardio every day, working out every day. Like, yeah, I don't know how you do this shit. I, I, maybe if I had like a gym in my a complex or like in my house or some shit, I probably would. But all this home workout stuff, I can't sweat in my own house. There's only one reason why you should be sweating in your own house, Tony. And working out is not it, bro. That's right. That's my, that's what I'd be telling people. I'd just be saying. That's the only workout I do here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, bar classes. Yep. <laughs> thank you, bar classes. Forearm workout. Forearm looking, looking big, bro. Thanks, bro. Just my right Whoa. one. I probably work out like four times a week, um, but I've been doing only yeah. hit training. So yeah, just high intensity, no weights. When this, when we finally locked down, right when Disney shut down, I was like, oh, we got a problem here. Yeah. Uh, and then LA Fitness sent out the letter, like, mm -hmm. you know, or email. <laughs> letter? What? Yeah. What Did you get it in the mail? <laughs> Thomas Jefferson sent it to me. Um, <laughs> exactly. No, but an, an email got sent out and they were like, hey, by the way, we're shutting down. You know, you can uh, you could put these three months on the back end of your membership or whatever bullshit, stupid credit they're trying to give you. Um, right. I was like, uh, we're going to have a problem here. We're, we're not going to be able to work out. And uh, the yeah. wife's like, okay, good. And I'm like, fuck. All right. So I'm on my own here. So we went to play yeah. against sports and everything was sold out, wiped out clean. Of course. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I got was leg weights, like the old school, you know, strap. Yeah. Like the 20 pound leg weights that no one uses. So I was those like, were left. <laughs> those were left. Yeah. And uh, I had, you know, jump rope and all that shit. And I had the perfect push up, which I do that every day, which is like my favorite thing on earth. I was like, all right, I guess I'll use the weight. So now I use, I literally put the two leg weights all the way up on my arm. I'll do like one here on the forearm, one here, and I'll do like curls with it, right? Or I'll do All like, right. I'll do some uh, some lat raises. You know, sometimes I'll do like shoulder presses with them. So I'm trying to improvise and do a little bit, but it's it's tough to stay motivated, bro. It really is, especially because, I mean, dude, every other day I'm drinking. It's a problem. Yeah. it's, And every time I, I feel like I jump on a call with somebody or like a podcast or a Zoom meeting or whatever, I have to be drinking have to be like so, it's 10 a.m chris i like have to have a drink in my hand it's like i hope they go back to this like 10 years from now and, and look at anything i've been recording during this quarantine and every and just count the drinks that i've had yeah Plenty. when you die of like you know liver disease <laughs> right like where did that all stem from he's not even an alcoholic quarantine <laughs> quarantine this is going to be like a milestone of of the country though man like this is you know like now yeah. this is going to be like 9 11 status maybe even bigger yeah, maybe bigger. You know, I mean, yeah. this is worldwide. It's crazy. Like, can you see yourself in six months being at a concert with 60,000 people? 
It's funny because we uh, we were supposed to go out to Tennessee to see Rogan and Chappelle tour. They're only going to two places in the whole country this year, Louisiana and, and Nashville, and they shut that down. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's you know it was in April, so they they told us like end of March. <laughs> So I canceled <laughs> yeah. everything, no problems. But then they rescheduled for September. And it was mm. the most excited that I've been to go to like an event. And I go to a lot of concerts and that's all I do for work now is every weekend I'm at an event, like whether it's massive concerts and, and all these festivals. So I'm doing we all this get it, bro. And- we get it. Jeez, this guy, <laughs> right? He goes to concerts all the time and he gets paid for it. Does everybody hear this? Great. Great, Tony. Nobody's jealous at all. <laughs> Tell him I said hi. All those people there. Uh, and then, you know, like, I was like, uh, I can get back to work. I'm excited about that. But I was more excited about this Rogan Chappelle thing. Cause like Rogan's like yeah. my podcast and, you know, comic idol. He's hilarious. Like and a hero, Chappelle's, right? Yeah. And then Chappelle's yeah. just like the Mecca, obviously. Of course. Of course. And then now it got rescheduled to September and apparently it's still on, but then mm. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go. It's weird, you know, right? Like, it's, it's, I went from being the most excited I've been to go to an event. And the reason I, you know, rub in your face that I do all these events is because that's part of my life. So it's, it should always be exciting oh, and fun. Right. But the Rogan Chappelle thing was like, I'm, I was like stoked all year. Like I bought this shit like eight months in advance. And then now I'm just yeah. kind of like, eh. And then strange. how does that work with your job? Thing. If your job is about events and these yeah. events stop, you ever get stressed? Like, oh shit, maybe monster doesn't need me. Yeah. That's a good question. Not really. I mean, cause I'm, I'm oh, doing good. everything I can, I'm doing everything I can to bring value from like a digital standpoint. So like, right. Of course the events that I do, there's one event in particular that is going on next month down in Miami. And uh, they obviously had to cancel that. It was for Memorial day, but it's for, for first responders for military, and, oh. um, USO and army and stuff like that. And we do it every year. It's this massive, like Navy seal training course that, you know, like, uh, seals drop down from helicopters into the ocean and they'll That's swim cool. up and they'll do like tactical training and then there'll be tanks on the beach. And like, it's, it's this massive, it's like the second largest one in the country. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll bring out like our FMX team and we'll ramp dirt bikes and shit. And we, we make it a big deal. And then obviously we weren't doing it. So I got with the organizer. I'm like, Hey, listen, man, I kind of still want to do something for the first responders, but you know, because of this COVID thing, let's, let's get a little creative. Let's do like an Instagram live. And mm-hmm. I want to give away a monster energy dirt bike to one of the, hospital workers or someone in first responders dealing with COVID. So that's cool. That kind of like branched off like this massive thing where Honda or Hyundai is the sponsor of the actual full event. So mm-hmm. Honda is going to raffle off four cars and all wow. you got to do that's is like a value of $3,000 total <laughs> <laughs> for all four cars. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it's, you know, it's like stuff like that. I'm like doing on my own because, you know, when they, when the company finds out about it, hopefully it'll be like, eh, well, maybe we can move him to like this. Maybe we'll make him our social media guy or something. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I'm trying to do everything I can. Yeah. If if it works out cool, if not, you know, it's, it's meant to be, it is what it is, but I'm having a blast working for the company there and they haven't laid anybody off. You know, they're, uh, they're a good company. So that is a really good company. Yeah, man. But we'll see that it is weird. I think events will still be, still be going. But mm. um, I even heard shit might go like, like you said earlier, virtual. Mm. You know, maybe, maybe you're seeing events and it's going to be all virtual reality instead of right. in person. Maybe they do stuff like in the comfort of their own home, or maybe they build out a studio in their backyard or something like that. They make it look like it's outside and then you're just throwing on some VR goggles and you know, you're paying you're half the price, but you get to stay at home and you don't have to worry about God forbid mass shootings and you know, all this stuff. Right. So it's like, right. I think like 10 years from now, man, we're really going to see like a shift. Which yeah, is weird super because, viruses you know, aren't going away. No, man. And yeah. I mean, think about it. It's not really that far fetched because, you know, a hundred years ago, stand up comedy didn't exist. So it's not far fetched. I mean, now Kevin Hart is selling out stadiums of 25,000 yeah. people. So if you told someone a hundred years ago where stand up didn't exist and then like, hey, by the way, there's going to be one guy that's going to start a revolution of selling out 30,000 people in the stadium, they're going to be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Nobody wants so, to hear that. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man, who knows in 10, 15 years, it's going to be fucking nuts. Yeah. This so. is going to change everything for a long time. Yeah. What about you? How about uh, getting gigs and stuff? Are you still, uh, are you in the middle of shooting or are you working on? No, I'm uh, I, you know, I wish I had booked something prior to the quarantine. Cause then I could be like creating my character and spending more energy than I get to doing those things. But I didn't, 
<laughs> so, so, <laughs> uh, so, you know, no, but, uh, you know, I was in Alaska in December and we filmed, um, this movie that I wrote and produced and, and starred in co-starred in, um, and things work out sometimes and they don't. And this was like a very low budget project and, um, people dropped out after we shot it. And so I've been editing it and, uh, I wasn't too nervous about, editing a feature for the first time but it was like one of those things where I was like I know this is going to be a task and I know there's professionals that's all they do is this so I need to take it very serious and um and I, you know you, just another part of storytelling I learned you know by doing this so I've been editing this movie wow and it's it's close to done we're waiting on a soundtrack from a composer and uh we have to redo some lines you know we have to do some ADR uh two of the cast members ended up getting coronavirus no shit yeah um and you know they're mid thirties. Um, yeah. and it turned into, it turned from a, a sinus infection right before the quarantine. And, uh, cause I was trying to set up all of us meet so we could do this dialogue, have the movie done ASAP. And uh, she was like, no, my voice is a little messed up. I, you know, I got the sinus thing. And then a couple, we got quarantine. I was like, Oh, I guess we're not going to meet for this, but maybe I can drop off the equipment. And then she was like, um, I have pneumonia. I was like, Oh, that's too bad. Well, let me know when you feel better. Then it's like, Oh, I got tested positive for Corona. Um, so she's on like a oh. breathing thing and like it's all in her lungs. Oh. And yeah. So, you know, it's, I know somebody directly that has Corona. I know a lot of people are like, well, who do you know directly? You know, <laughs> who's not an aunt of a cousin's son's dog's neighbor, but like, right. so Fucking I actually aunt, know someone guys. directly. Yeah. Do you know That's someone crazy. directly? Um, not directly. I mean, I mean, there's six people that I work with. Okay. That have a fan member that either got it or has it currently. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it could be bullshit. I don't know. But it's, not it's really... funny how the pneumonia is very close to the same uh, symptoms as the coronavirus. I was like, that's yeah. interesting in a sense. I guess. Yeah. But and I, yeah. Think, I think some people, uh, just the articles I read, <clears throat> apparently people that recover with like, they feel fine, everything's fine, but then they do tests like a month later after being infected and their lungs are fucked. Right. Like, tissue gone like really yeah. ate away at the that's scary man all this is scary you know? it's yeah. a it's a invisible enemy right yeah like no and then you i'm like ocd and about being clean uh in general right and so now i'm like the anxiety of it is like rough oh yeah you know? well you are you even going handle. out i mean like, aside from oh, shopping and stuff i mean yeah no like whether I, I walk down to the the nor the Ralph's, which is like a food store, um, mm -hmm. or I just get delivery food. That's really it. So, but even those, you're like, all right, I got to mount up. You know, I got gloves, got your mask. I put on my combat boots because I don't know what I'm gonna have to do. <laughs> you know, you don't know what could happen, right? Like, you could be out just like buying eggs or trying to find eggs, and next thing you know, it's like that fucking purge alarm goes off, and I want to make sure I got all combat boots in case I got to run or kick something or <laughs> this is what you've been preparing. Like a zombie apocalypse oh is something that you've always wanted. So I mean, it's one like, of those things, right? Like, yeah, it's, you get rid of, you know, Darwinism to the, to the fullest. Right. Yeah. And like, it really shows how much of a survive. I know how to box now, so I'll be ready. And all you got to do is once you master the bowling, then you'll really be ready for an apocalypse. That'll be, my thing with the bowling, though, bro, is I learned how to do the spin. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the thing I wanted to learn, like, so badly. Like, I was tired of going out with, like, friends or going on dates. Because bowling dates is always cute, you know? It's, like, not too expensive and, like, kind of competitive, but not. And I'm yeah. just like, Bleh. and then, like, 101, yeah. And then we, like, hug each other for being shitty at this game. And then, you know, we go. I was like, you know, I'm tired she of never, She never talks to you again because you're a shitty bowler happened before or at like my 101 score destroyed her like 42 right right and i never talked to her again <laughs> because she sucks so bad at all because she's so bad at it. she didn't want nothing to do with me either um how was the yeah, uh, just, how was the how was the dating pool going for you i mean it's non-existent right now right like to me the anxiety is way worse than just staying here and not and not uh not meeting yeah. women and i don't do zoom dates or anything like that. There's very few people I like to talk to in general. Never mind some random stranger girl I get to hear about her boring ass day. I don't care what you're doing. <laughs> and it's not like she's doing anything different than you are. Exactly. What did you do today? I woke up, I had coffee at eight. 
Oh, okay, cool. Wow. What do you watch on Netflix? I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't care. By the way, have you watched Extraction on Netflix yet? I don't care. No, I didn't. <laughs> we did actually see it the other night. It's incredible. Did you? It's incredible, it's really right? No, it's really Man, good. And action, dude. Dude, I actually sold her on the trailer because I was like, you yeah. know, it's going to be heartfelt and because, you know, he's Chris Hemsworth, he's Rescue turning over him. a new leaf, his son died, yeah. like he's going to save this kid. Like in the back mm-hmm. of my head, I'm like, this has got to be a fucking gory ass, like born type born. of thing, right? And yeah, I watched yeah. it and I was like blown away of how much action was in that thing and blood it was great and, gore. and i mean the fight scenes too the choreography was incredible phenomenal like that one that scene impressed. i think well like when he's fighting that main guy and like he gets hit by a car right, right. and somehow after you know and then he's driving a car and hits the other guy i was like oh please let that be chris i was like yes yes you know and then he just opens up the door all nonchalant he's like oh get in mate yeah it was get great in, mate. the uh you you obviously probably know what it, what it's called, but it made it look like it was all one shot the whole movie. Mm. But there There's was a lot of that. There was little hints of transitions that you could tell to where he's you know instead of like yeah he panned a little bit to the left and then he went into someone's shirt and then you know they probably right changed the scene yeah. at that point. But it, it was very I'm funny. Smooth. You notice that they do that yeah. a lot and like I feel like most people are just watching it blindly. But it's cool that you noticed that. I right away I was like shit how did he end up in the car and then he got out of the car and now he's back yeah. in the other car like just wild stuff it was incredible yeah. Yeah. yeah it was it was really well done he actually produced it too i saw him the uh the credits good for him Hemsworth did. making some money yeah dude kudos and he's looking yeah. good he's vegan now or trying is he? to be yeah, yeah who isn't vegan now something. when i'm done with this quarantine i'm going vegan that's the worst thing you should be vegan now because no one's judging you right now because you're, you're not talking now bro yeah. i can't do it now so you don't want just, to be vegan and go out in public. That's the worst thing. That's what I do. Is it? It's not okay. No, well, you're you're not in LA though. Everybody's vegan here. I was like right, one of the true. last few that wasn't vegan, and you know what I mean. I was like, uh, I have a steak, Come and they're all like, oh, a cow, <laughs> cow died for you. Like, but I was, I'm also okay with the idea of like meat becoming a premium, right? Like, mm. I'm I'm completely okay with like if I wanted a burger and I spent fifty dollars for that burger, that's okay because I know what it's doing for the environment. And like yeah. be eating beyond meat most of the time, you know, make it make right. real meat a treat. I don't mind that idea. I think that should yeah. be where we head to. And that should even be the slogan. Meat to treat. Meat to treat. It really is. Th- at one point. It really is. Yeah. And you know, there's even. Uh, do you feel like this is going to open up kind of the um, the floodgates even more to how we factory farm and things like that? No. You <laughs> think so? I mean, it came See, from it- a fucking bat, <laughs> supposedly. You know, it's like. Hey guys, right, but, stop eating bats. So we don't eat bat in America, so we're fine. Yeah, but the only reason you know it, it came from that, so they say, is because of the wet markets. But uh, the wet markets, all they are is you know, it's a chicken on top of a bat cage. Yeah. Chicken takes a shit. It goes on the yeah. bat. Yeah. They don't clean the bat properly. Kind of the same things happening with, you know, cows and chickens and pigs, except for it's just all one species. Ch- all chickens in cages, and it's all you know, pigs in these, these ten worms. There was an interesting uh, YouTube video I was watching because that's what we do now for information. For real. Um, but uh, it was saying something very similar to like wet markets versus factory farming where for the coronavirus, they're telling us to keep our distance, to mm-hmm. not be stressed, to be active, be healthy, and to live a carefree environment so that way we're not stressed out and we're going to live a healthier life. And then they kind of go to factory farming. They go... That's the opposite of how we intake food. Mm. So everything's close. The animals are stressed. And then when they get, you know, stressed and weak, we pump them full of antibiotics Mm -hmm. to beef them up and to make them stronger. And then, you know, we obviously ingest that stuff. So it's like, it's almost like our, our cure is what we're supposed to do to our food. That's kind of, I like that idea. Yeah. I can see that for sure. Yeah. And from that perspective, now that I've heard it, yeah, it might change when we're all done with this and, and we're in the, in the clear as, or as we think it's clear, like the way we eat and the way we uh, intake food. Yeah. For real. Cause I agree. I mean, I think I probably would, I would not be vegan if it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't dealt with the way it is now. Cause that's, I think the yeah. issue for me in particular with Crohn's is I don't want to say type of food. Cause I don't necessarily think it's meat. I don't think that's my problem. I just think whatever's 
whatever's either in the meat that they're using, whether it's an antibiotic or whether mm-hmm. it's maybe it's under stress and the meat's really tough because I've had right. gamey meat and I'm fine. Right. Like oh. I don't feel anything intestinally. Nothing's fucked up when I do it. But when right. I have like, you know, a steak or a burger or a piece of chicken, it's rough. It's hard to digest. Like there's no, it's not surprising that, you know. What if you, what if you cut it up really small? Doesn't matter. It's just like, it's the, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the fucking corn analogy, bro. No, you know? I know. I, but I'm just picturing Tony with like a whole T-bone, just like the full steak. I don't, I don't need to cut it. No. You're like, oh, I'll why is my intestine not liking this? <laughs> it is weird though. Like, I mean, cause you think that would matter. Right. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, that's what I thought. I was like, well, what if I just chew a lot? Right. You know, cause if break it's it down for my stomach. Down, Right. right. No. No, it's got to be because something else. It's got to be something else. And yeah. it's like, you know, when I say corn, I mean, like, you chew corn constantly, but somehow it always ends up on the other end, a whole kernel. Whole like, corn. Did I, yeah. Did I chew that fucking thing? Why are you down I there? I love corn. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. We actually had some, we had some tacos uh, today. We made our own tacos. It's nice. That is, you put that, that little funny. dragon fruit thing in it that tastes like, that wants to be meat, but it's not. We actually had Beyond Meat. Yeah, they have like yeah. Beyond Meat crumbles. It's like ground right. beef. So we'll chop that. up that shit with some taco seasoning and we'll throw in some pinto beans, a little, uh, little cheese, some yep. corn, some salsa, roll that bitch up and a burrito. Mm. Phenomenal now, are, you, dinner. are you cooking a, at home or are you doing a lot of like uh, takeout and pickup and shit? Mo- you know, it's normally I meal prep, right? So before the quarantine, while I'm doing the gym, like it's meal prep, like it's cheap mm-hmm. and like I know exactly what's going in my body and then I'll, I'll enjoy like that cheap meal on like a Friday night and a Saturday night, right? But now there's no gym, so I have no routine. And I'm just like, all right, um, I don't really feel like cooking anymore. I'm just going to order shit and just eat like a fat pig that I am. It's, it's pretty bad. I had abs a month or two ago. Not no more. Not no more. And then, uh, you know, I'm just finding, I'm just eating shit because I'm bored, right? Like, yeah. I just, oh, what do I have in here? I don't know. I guess I'll just eat chips because it's this motion, <laughs> you know? It's something terrible, bro. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. So, yeah, like, after bad. we're done here, I'm going to order a pizza. <laughs> that's what I'm craving right now. I was like, damn, what time is it? 5.30? All right, I can, I can go after and just get a pizza. Then. Yeah. And I'll yeah, probably bro. eat 70% of that pizza. <laughs> and then save the rest for, like, you know, a little midnight snack. A little later, you know? You fat fuck. I love it. Fat fuck, man. It's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. But, you know, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, once we're ba- once the gym is open and I feel comfortable about going back, you know, then it's like, you know what, let me try the vegan thing. Let me get rid of all this shit. And, then, uh, you know, really yeah. get back into the lean, mean Chris that I can be, you know, like, you know, it's funny. Did I tell you I went to a psychic? No. So before the quarantine, listen to this story. You got time for a story, Tony? Hold on. Are you going anywhere? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I live right in, like, uh, like three blocks from, the main theater in downtown it's called it's a regal la in la live is where the staples center is as well i'm like three blocks from it so i'm walking down this kind of dark sidewalk and this woman in like a brand new bmw pulls up to the on the sidewalk and stops and roll down the window and uh, and like you're glowing in the dark and like where i live downtown it's like mostly on the poorer side because it saves me some money it's not like people like white like me walking around normally right so she sure. stops and she's like oh you're this bright light and i'm thinking to myself yeah i'm like pretty pale right now it's just me yeah. being white you know what a racist thing to and, say you know that's what i said i was like listen i could not be white you know i could be a, something else yeah. but i'm white and so anyway so she was a psychic and she talked me into doing a free little read and she uh long story short she goes she reads my palm we, we went into a lot of things right i'm not going to go into it but the funny part was she reads my palm and she says some line on my palm with something, right? And then she goes, you're going to live a really long life to like 70, 75. And I was like, huh? I'm halfway through my life. That's not long life. Like that's the worst. Who that's says horrible. long life in 75? I'm halfway through my life right now. I feel like I've accomplished nothing. I've done nothing, Tony. <laughs> I've done nothing. I started your podcast career and that was it. You're helping other people. Fuck. I think uh, I think Daniel Baldwin thanks you for launching his career after anabolic life. So it's like I re relaunched his career, didn't I? Yeah, exactly. That it was guy. Daniel, right? That was the right brother. That was Daniel Baldwin. Yeah, that was a great move, man. I was, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you showed it again. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping in cool. on that. 
you know, yeah, it's been out awesome. for over a year, but you know, the thing when you don't have, when you don't have a huge marketing budget is a lot of people still haven't seen the movie, even though it's been out. I know it's redundant to people like you have, you know, always supported me from day one with it, but for people that are just getting to know me, it's like a fresh, fresh thing still for a lot of people. So yeah, dude, nothing, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Hey, listen, there's, there's a, uh, there's shows and, and movies that or streaming now that you know people tell me to go watch and i'm like no i haven't seen it like oh really and i was like when did it come out they go man like 15 years ago i'm like and i haven't seen it well shit i need to watch it and yours is only yeah, a year true. old you know what i mean so yeah it's, you know, not too got, bad. It's, it's gonna be the gift that keeps on giving so i'll leave a link in the podcast but um anabolic life man it's available it's on i know i got it on amazon but is it available everywhere yeah. like voodoo and stuff or yeah exactly it's everywhere it's free on prime and it's free on tubi so, you know, Tubi's free to sign up for. So if you don't want to spend no money and don't want to support me, I get it. Just enjoy the movie. <laughs> yeah, but if too. you want to support me, buy that Blu-ray on Amazon. No doubt. No doubt. That's the way Even to though go. Amazon takes like eight weeks to get orders now. Oh, my God. You notice that? I can't oh, order yeah. from Amazon. Well, dude, what, was, what pissed me off the most, aside from gym equipment, which I'm still waiting on through Amazon, mm -hmm. um, not surprisingly, but even this – even this podcast thing I ordered on Amazon day one because my buddy's been telling me to get it. I guess encourage him to launch a podcast, and you know it's uh, it's an all in one thing. And yeah, I was like, oh, sick! All right, let me let me check it out. So I looked at it and I ordered it, and that was I don't know nine weeks ago, I think, and I just got it last week. And uh, yeah, it's like you know, I guess this wasn't a uh, necessity, which I disagree yeah. on personally because yeah, uh, an extra carburetor for my car. Okay. Yeah. Take your time. I'm not driving anywhere, you know, but no, I don't know why you would get that on Amazon, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they're starting to, I could see they're starting to pick it up. I ordered some Tupperware two days ago and I actually got uh -huh. it this evening. No way. Yeah. And there's no way that's essential. Good for you on that. Yeah. Dude. Well, you're looking at a prime member. What can I tell you? You're a prime member. That's for sure. You know, I, I got to say, man, like uh, your, your tonality, your professionalism, your open mindedness. Like I really enjoy you as a person and what you're doing with this man it's like i don't i mean i don't listen to any podcast like sometimes on youtube i'll watch joe rogan clips but that's really it um i i i, I just not into people talking a lot to be honest with you I, you know just, well, you're not into people nothing wrong with that it's okay that's also true i don't like many people so you know but um but yeah you're doing it right bro and i just it's just keep doing it you know that's all i can say to you is like uh thank you bro you know yeah if you needed that motivation that. for the day, <laughs> you're like, Chris, I didn't I did. even ask for it, bro. Like, I don't care what you think. I'm doing, I'm going to keep it. doing it whether you said it or not. <laughs> well, I was going to quit after this because I'm losing my yeah. head. On it. it's, it's, exactly. it, no, I appreciate you saying that, man. It's been, uh, it's, it's been tough and it's been, uh, it's a, it's a huge passion of mine. I wish I had the, the time to really, really put what I want into it, but man, it's just, it yeah. is tough. It's a lot of work, you know, with the editing yeah. and, and all that stuff. So. Yeah, because I do, I mean, like you, I'm, I'm doing everything myself too, the editing and the yeah. Instagram posts. And <clears throat> if I can get to one point where now I have one sponsorship, which is cool, but if I can get to the point where I have like- Who's your sponsor? Super Fat. Super Fat. Uh, yeah, have you tried it? Let, let's talk about it. Is there sponsoring you? Let's let's give them a plug. Dude, well, normally I throw in the pre-roll or post-roll, but yes, I mean, Super Fat, I don't want to oversell it. It's just, it's going to be the best nut butter you've ever had in your life. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had my fair share of nut butters. <laughs> so you know when you're stuck under quarantine and you're thinking to yourself yeah. you know what i'm missing some good old-fashioned nut butter no but now, it's, does this uh, come with like how-to instructions or <laughs> most nut butters do super fat <laughs> no sir no do no instructions <laughs> right, um, right no but what's rad about uh they're only like i don't know 12 months old or something like that 13 months old it's not peanut butter. There's no, it's made of almonds and macadamia nuts, which obviously cool. as you know is a good, it's a good fat. And they have, you know, four or five different flavors made with cacao. They're vegan, they're gluten-free, they're paleo friendly. Um, they're keto friendly, of course. And they come in these like little two ounce pouches. I mean, obviously you can go with them anywhere, but what I love about them most is, I mean, you remember we used to make peanut butter sandwiches and everything, peanut butter smoothies, all that stuff. So I'll put it in everything, smoothies, yeah. all that. But I used to just take like, a peanut butter container spoon and that's a snack to the face mm -hmm. so the cool thing with the pouch is just kind of keeps me to not do that now the two ounce so, pouch how much protein do you get in that um depends on what flavor but i mean you're getting in between like 12 to 16 grams that's not I'll bad have, no it's good 
because it'll have one that's you know just almonds and like yeah. coconut and that obviously has more protein and there's one that has cacao and coconut and that's like nine grams of protein so on average oh, it's like right. 12 grams of protein but not a bad deal yeah, dude, shout out to super fat nut fat. butter go to superfat.com use the code berardo 10 bucko berardo 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 10 berardo 10 wow how many jacks and <laughs> cokes is that for you <laughs> Is that what you're drinking? That was a tall glass. That was a tall glass. It's getting sweaty over here. Holy happy hour podcast, Batman. Man, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're good, dude. It tasted like water after a little bit. I mean, bro, what else are we going to do? It's true. It's very true, bro. Um, no, but it's cool. If I can get if I can get like two or three more sponsors, uh, you know, I'll probably hire the money I get from that. I'll just hire somebody to do my own yeah. editing and all that shit. Because, you know, it's it's also quality time with the wife, too. You know, I don't. I could put out a lot more content, but it's like, you know, I want to spend time with her too. I don't want to ignore her. I mean, I want this thing to last at least 10 years, you know? Yeah. What's BB doing right now? That's my new nickname for her. BB. <laughs> She's come out that on the spot right now. I was like, Oh, Brenda. Oh yeah. BB. Yo, BB. <laughs> I was probably too loud. So she's got headphones in and she's um, got the headphones hooked up to the Roku. Do you have a Roku? Right. I don't have a Roku. Cause you know, you get the Roku, you hook up the headphones to the remote. And then whatever's on TV. Oh, that's listen. cool. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah, it's weird. I have the, the Fire Stick. They don't have that. That's a great idea, though. Just telling you, man. Bluetooth Always. work with it, or you have to have the auxiliary plug for your headphones. But we're not that far advanced, okay? Don't don't be so stingy. You, you got AirPods in like me, bro. AirPods. We're advanced. <laughs> Again, this is another Prime purchase during quarantine. I'm like, you know, I this is the this best is thing. I, when it first it came out, awesome. I was like, idiots. They look stupid. Now I'm like. I'm always, I always have one in. I can always have music. I'm hands free. Look at this. Dude, Just, <laughs> look at my hands. <laughs> what do I do with these? <laughs> so many things to do. I could do so many yeah. things and yet I'm doing nothing with them. But I do nothing. But what is cool though about these is because I have all Apple. So I have like the Mac that I'm, I'm watching you on. Um, right. Shout out to Mac, not a sponsor. But I can link these up to my Mac, but also to my phone. Seriously, right. no. So it's uh, it is night and day, bro, for sure. I was yeah, I was kind of making fun of the wife because I got it for her for Christmas, mm -hmm. and she's like, "You didn't get one for yourself." I'm like, "I'm not. I don't need fucking. I don't need those." No. Two months later, Amazon Prime, son. Yeah, it's funny because I was like, "Oh, you were like put on headphones." I was like, "Got the AirPods," and you're like, "Ooh, fancy, huh?" And then I see on your Instagram <laughs> you rocking them. <laughs> I was like, "This guy." Oh, that was too funny today. I'm still not admitting it to a lot of people because I don't want them. No, to be I like, can see that. You know. You ever see that uh, that dude on Instagram that makes his own videos, Kyle? No. But he does. I'm gonna send you some stuff. But he does this whole bit of AirPods where it's like, he'll have like regular headsets in, and I'll have conversations with his buddy like normally. <laughs> but then, uh -huh. you know, the next scene or it's like two days later, he'll get AirPods and he talks totally different. He's like, <laughs> Oh yeah, because of AirPods. <laughs> It's like, yo, are we going to go get jackfruit tacos later? <laughs> like, he's just totally <laughs> hipster, vegan. And he's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it makes you, I don't know. I love it. I think it's great invention. No, I'm a better person because of it, no doubt. Yeah. For sure. Apple's changed my life. That's right. Shout out to Apple. You do a little Apple, like, right there. Ding. I'm going to get more to this side so you can do product placement right here the whole time. Yeah, as we're an hour and 20 minutes in, now change it up. Like, oh, <laughs> wow. Hour and 20 minutes? Isn't that something? Crazy. But you know, that's, this is our catch up and people get to listen if they want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, just like the last episode, you know, no one's probably going to listen, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. One day they're going to be like, you talked to Chris Levine on a podcast? Wow. That was, wait, He's, that was you? We're just launching each other's careers. That's all. Pretty crazy. Back and forth. Yeah, um, we're still under quarantine. Yeah, dude, an hour and 20 minutes. Technically, it's been longer since we talked a little bit you know, beforehand. Yeah. But no, this is great though, dude. I wish, um, I mean, I wish you would get back over here in Florida or me go back over there or something, but yeah, dude. One day. What's the long-term goals look like for you? What do you got? What do you got going on? Anything planned here the next? Yeah. So I'll have three movies coming out this year, which is pretty cool. Whoa, um, dude. Not a lead actor or anything, but just little yeah. roles in them and uh, it, it builds to the credit. So I have a, uh, a good friend of mine, Michael Rossi, who's a director, um, he has a cool action film, indie action film coming out. And I play a little thug towards the end and get to shoot some AK-47, so that was fun. The director of Anabolic Life has a movie coming out this year that I just play a cop for a couple lines, no big deal. Like I was saying, my No Way Out movie, my Alaskan film, that about four campers in the woods and, uh, and someone starts, starts uh, stalking them. 
that'll be coming out and that should be fun. So nice little year of rap, you know, coming soon for me, I hope. Dude, that's awesome. Congrats, bud. Thanks, man. Yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully it uh turns into more work and even more work and then Yeah, fly. dude. Wait. Hey, listen, man, I you're, can retire. You're living... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, listen, dude, you're, you're living, man. You're, you're living the dream, bro. So I, uh, you know, I give my hats off to you. And, Thank you, uh, sir. Hair you looks know, great, always... by the way, bro. Your hair looks dude, great. Look at the fullness in that hair. Oh, Jealous. yeah, I have no clue. Looks I, mean, great. Could, I mean, look at this. Looks great, bro. Look it's, at all that. It's retarded. Good for you. Retarded. I got a number. It is super fucking retarded. Ooh. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, that looks pretty bro. good, bro. Yeah. I, once, I, once I bought the hat, I was like, you know, I should... I should brush up on my Boston. Yeah. yeah. Go, uh, go park the car. No, but dude, it's always good to see you, man. And, uh, yeah. we definitely should do these more often. Again, I said, I said it before I'll say it again. There was a lot of people where I wanted to do like interviews and stuff. And they said, well, you know, I'm too busy, but you, you definitely gave, uh, you gave some time for me for, you know, the first one a year ago. So I won't forget that. And I appreciate you coming on again. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you and the career that you've, you've created. And it's just getting started too. And, yeah. uh, I mean, the good news is according to psychic, you only have uh, 35 years left. So you got plenty of time. Got plenty of time. <laughs> Not to make you out <laughs> even more. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words though, bro. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Nah, dude. I'm excited yeah. to see you, man. And we'll, let's do this again. Let's like at 75, I'm going to bring you back on again. Cool. Yeah. Just so let me 10 know more man. episodes. Or we could do 100. We could just wait till hundred. Ooh, do a little cento, a little century. But you're like. I got other plans for 100, Chris. Okay, like don't put yourself in a prime position. Let me figure some shit out, you know. Yeah, I'll do like 101. Okay, don't get don't get fucking cocky. Don't yeah, exactly. Don't take those kind don't take those kind words to heart. Okay. <laughs> like this guy <laughs> wants number 100, guys. <laughs> you fucking hear this guy? A hundred? <laughs> the balls on this guy. Yeah. Oh, is this still on? Oh, Chris, you're still there. <laughs> No, but definitely we'll, we'll do it again, man. Hopefully you're staying yeah, safe man. out there and, uh, you too. and you know, hopefully we can see each other again soon, man. Once, uh, once this One thing, day. you know, wraps up. Yeah. I just grabbed your face. Grabbed your face. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. Yeah. Be safe out there, brother. Good talking. You to too, me. brother. Take care. All right.